Hey everybody. Good morning. How are you? We are going to do a live Monday with Deco Art this morning and like with the watercolor, we're going to start out with some basics. Good morning. I've had all my coffee, so yay. I think I'm awake. <laughs> well, I've got some I've got some tea next to me. It's half decaf, but you know. Good day. All right, so this morning with our Monday with Deco Art, we're gonna start out with these little bottles here. Now this is the palette sampler set of Deco Art Traditions Artists Acrylics. Um, it comes with these 12 bottles. You can order these from decoart.com. Um, go to Traditions, um, Deco Art Traditions, and they have the palette sampler kit. I think it's like $21 and change. Um, and it comes with 10 colors and two mediums. So it's a really easy basic kit to get and try. And you get, you get a good selection of basic colors and we're gonna go over that today and we're gonna do some color blending, color mixing. And if we have time, I'm going to show you how to turn it into a journal page too. Deco Art chalk paint this weekend. Oh, cool. All right, so the kit comes with, oh, see, now I need my glasses so I can read the labels. Um, extender and blending medium, glazing medium. These will both extend the drying time of your acrylic paint, and the glazing medium will make it a bit uh, translucent or see-through. Um, you get opaque white, and you get carbon black, you get raw umber, raw sienna, uh, le Hansa yellow, and I almost called it lemon yellow because it looks very lemony to me, um, napthal red light, red violet, uh, phthalo green blue, phthalo blue, and ultramarine blue. And you all know me, it's got it's got a number of blues or blue greens, so I love the palette. So for the at least the first part of this, we're gonna take out the two mediums and we're gonna take out the black and the white. Now, if you choose to expand on this sort of exercise that we're gonna do, you definitely could add in black and white later, and I'll talk about that as we go along. And um, you can experiment by adding in the black and white. But for right now, we're going to use these colors. And we have three, six, we have eight colors. I'm going to arrange them on my table from sort of lightest, like yellow, orange, red. I'm going to put the violet one, the, the blue green, and then the phthalo blue, the ultramarine blue. And I'm going to put the raw umber at the end. So I've got, this is the, that's okay, Cheryl. This is the Deco Art Traditions Artist Acrylic Palette Sampler Set of paints. I have more Deco Art Traditions paints, but I thought for this exercise, if we limited sort of the color palette, that would be better for you guys. Then, cause I think I have like 20 colors. I think that would be too many. Um, so we're gonna start with Hansa Yellow. We've got Raw Sienna the napthal red, the red violet, the phthalo green, blue, the phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, and raw umber. In that order. And you notice, um, I'm not complaining about my um, picture being upside down because I think I figured out what I was doing wrong. I'll show you what we're gonna do. So we, I can't, so I know we have eight colors here. So the first thing we need to do and this is a piece of 140 pound watercolor paper, Strathmore watercolor paper. So the first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna get a ruler and a pencil, and we're going to mark out a grid that's eight squares by eight squares. Um, and I wanna kind of try to center it in the paper. Let's see, the paper is nine, nine by 12. So, 
I'd like to do one inch squares. One inch squares would be good. So I'm going to do go a half an inch up from each end. And then we're going to just make tick marks, you know, put a little line. Have a have an eraser not too far away so that you can erase when you make a mistake like I just did. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now we need to do it this way, and we have 12, so I want to do two inches in, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. That'll work. I'm going to switch to this ruler, just because I have it in its handy. This is a, actually a quilting ruler from your fabric store um, or your craft store if they have a fabric department. And I am going to first mark out my half inch border. Now the nice thing about this ruler is it has all these lines on it so you can really line it up with the edge of the paper so you can get a nice straight line the first time. I'm just using a Bic Market. You want to use a watercolor marker. I mean watercolor marker, hello, waterproof marker. I did say I had all my coffee. Doesn't seem to help though, let's we'll see. Now these lines don't need to be perfect, but you know, I don't want them completely wonky either. I'm gonna do the outside first, and we're just, we're making a grid right now. You want a grid that's eight squares by eight squares. This is the part that's probably going to take the longest. This filling is making your grid. So while I'm doing this, it gives you all time to go get some paper and a pencil, make some notes, or do this along with me. So now I'm going to line up my ruler with the black edge and the little tick marks I made with the pencil, and I'm going to just start doing my lines. I missed that comment and I already messed up, I can tell you guys already, but that's okay. We're gonna work it into the finished piece. Yeah, I already missed I already messed up. <laughs> I already messed up. You know, maybe I ought to have an extra cup of coffee before I do these things okay we'll make it work it's a make it work moment right maybe we'll use the extra space for uh, writing I hope you guys all had a fabulous weekend I hope we had a nice quiet weekend. We chose not to go anywhere or do anything for a change, which was very nice. And I already have too many lines because I already messed it up, but that's all right. We're going to work it out. I'm going to, I have one of these, it's longer. I used to do, as some of you may know, a lot of sewing. So I have a lot of these like rulers and tool. I love tools. So that's one thing when I got rid of some of my sewing stuff, I didn't get rid of the tools. So 
So however many colors you decide to do this with, you wanna make sure that you have at least, when you do your grid, you have at least one square for each color at minimum. Yes, I love my Omni Grid rulers, which is the brand of these plastic rulers. And if you're into mixed media and art journaling, making your own journals, these rulers are super handy. Good morning, Miko, how are you? I am making a sort of color, we're gonna make a color blending chart. And I already messed up because these, I have too many squares, you know. Because I had two cups of coffee this morning, that wasn't quite enough and you know, I can paint you pretty pictures, but math is not my strong suit. At least not anymore, anyway. All right. So, now how many squares did we end up with now that I too screwed this up? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See, ten, and I only have eight colors. <laughs> Oops. That's okay, because right here, that's going to actually come in handy. Um, because we're going to write the color names um, here. Uh, yeah, we're going to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same marker and I'm going to write my color names since I have this extra row of squares. Yeah, exactly, for some info. So I'm going to write in this extra row of squares, I'm going to write the color names. Okay, so we have... Some of these words, I have to look at them. Yeah, see, right? I have to look at them to see how to spell them. This is a good exercise, though, in you know, working with whatever happens in your artwork or on your art journal page, things don't always turn out the way you have them pictured in your head. And that's okay. You need to just figure out how to make it work. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just different than what you thought it was going to be. So put all your color names here. And you can use any, like I said, any range of colors. Grab some craft paint from your stash if that's what you have and use that. This is a basic exercise. It's not about having any particular color, range of colors. If you have um, Deco Art Americana paints, use those. Whatever colors, you may not have these exact colors and that's okay. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is grab one of my brushes here. I'm gonna just use this filbert brush. Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, you could put this in your art journal. I can show you how to turn this into a journal page. If you have a reference book, you could do this exercise in your reference book as part of your reference book as one of the exercises. You could have a section in your reference book, your supplies reference book that's for um, exercises and experiments. So I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of each one of my colors. On I have some wax paper here. Nothing special. This is just dollar store wax paper. Okay. 
which is my favorite, you know, disposable palette paper, dollar store wax paper. You can throw it away when you're done or you can um, spread the paint out on it and use it as collage material in a mixed media page. How's everybody liking the Inspired by, by Van Gogh series? The part three aired this morning. There is a part four that shows you how to finish and seal the piece. Okay, so now the first thing we're gonna do is put a swatch of each color in the box next to the name. Then what you're gonna do is take the next box next to that name, put some of that yellow, and then put some of this next color that's below it, raw sienna. Mix it, just mix it right on the page, about 50-50. See what kind of color that you get. You could of course mix it on your palette paper. Okay, kinda of rinse my brush off a bit. And I'm gonna take the same lemon yellow in the next square. And I'm gonna mix it with the red, Napthal red. Right on the paper. You, Of course you could mix it over here and then put it on the paper. You know, whatever you, whatever works better for you. Remember, I'm the lazy crafter, so you know. <laughs> okay. And you're gonna do that all the way across. I'm gonna finish doing my watches here first. You see here's the original raw sienna compared to it mixed with the yellow, the different color that it turns. Color blending, yep. So here is the Napethal Red and you can see the difference between it and what it looks like when it's mixed with that yellow. And you want to blend these all the way across. Just like with the watercolors, this is one of your, this is like an acrylic basic. You don't know what your materials can do if you don't play with them and you don't try and you don't do experiments like this. Now what you could do at the end, since we have this like extra row of squares, is you could pick, um, oh thank you, you could pick, you could take the color and you could mix it with white and then also black in half of the color and see what happens. And maybe we'll do that since we have that extra square. So there's the phthalo blue. No, these colors came in the Deco Art um, palette sampler kit of their Artist Traditions paints. Um, this is the color sampling that they send you. And it's a set of 12 paints, these eight colors, black, white, and two mediums. You would want to probably, for experiment's sake, pick a warm and cool of each one of your primaries at minimum. So you'd want a um, warmer and a cooler yellow, a warmer and a cooler red, a warmer and a cooler blue um, at minimum. Um, but you can do this kind of experiment with whatever colors you have. If all you have are like neons and pastels because that's what you love, I still recommend that you do this with those colors. Okay, so going across on our yellow, we're going to take our yellow now and we're going to mix it with our red violet. And I wouldn't do all these squares across in the yellow because you really want to um, do this while the paint is wet. And look what happens. Purple and yellow are some of those colors you shouldn't mix, mix unless you really want a brown tone. Um, but sometimes you want a brown tone, so you want to know how to mix it and you want to know what color brown you're going to get. So you see that red, violet, and the yellow made a brown. So now we're going to do it with the phthalo blue green. Try to rinse your brush off pretty well in between. And 
and I'm just doing about 50-50. Now, if you did this with, you know, more yellow than the green, you would get a different color. So I do encourage you to, you know, do a few of these charts. So look what happens when you mix that. So here's the original green blue and here's what when you mix it with the yellow. So we're going to do this all the way across and I'm going to keep going. These are acrylic paints, yes. You can do this kind of color experiment with acrylic paint, with watercolor paint, with um of course if you work in oils, you could do oil paint. I don't work in oils. Let's see. I want the phthalo blue. And, and again, like I said, if you have a reference book, you know, if you're part of Journaling Crazy Island Style last year, we did reference books at the end of the year. And if you have a reference book, I really um, recommend you, you know, probably doing this as part of your reference book. I have, a, yeah, I have a big, um, I have the golden um, color chart poster. I actually don't have room in it in my stu for it in my studio anymore. Okay, so now we're gonna do what we were ultramarine excuse me, ultramarine blue. Yeah, Aaron, where do you keep your watercolor chart? It's a good question. One of the things you learn by doing this exercise is what colors you don't like to mix. <laughs> you really like, ooh, that's really an ugly color. Okay, so there's our Hansa Yellow mixed with all of the other colors we have on our palette paper, but we have this extra square. So let's get some of the black and white, which I wasn't gonna do this morning, but subconsciously I must have wanted to do it. Yeah, I have so much paint that's never gonna happen. <laughs> Thinking about purging some more paint, I know that's an artistic no-no, but Oops, crap. I didn't mean crap, you guys. I meant I did something to my iPad. Hang on. I can't see what's going on. Okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so now let's take, um, we have just a little bit of yellow left. It's not enough yellow. Let's get a little bit more yellow. Yeah, my reference book I have is just um, can as the um, Canson XL Mixed Media Spiral Bound. I actually unbound a couple of of the pads, and then did my sheets, and then rebound it with binder rings. So here I'm going to mix half of this with the white, and you get this really pretty pale yellow. And then I'm going to mix the other half with black. And you get this really interesting yellowy black color. I'm actually going to put a little more yellow in that. Yeah, I like that. All right, so now now we should do the raw sienna. So the raw sienna, we're gonna start with the Hansa yellow. So you don't don't start with the color that you have there as for blending because you already have that. I I missed something. Yeah, sorry. What did I miss? some iPad issues because my rag hit the iPad. 
So again, that's it mixed with the yellow. Yes, so as my art improved, has improved, and I've, it's not that I'm, I'm weeding out lesser quality paints as much as I'm weeding out the paints that I initially bought that to try. And now as my art has improved and I've gotten more experience, I've discovered I don't care working for, uh, working with. Um, so I have some products that I just, you know, I, you buy because when you're starting out, you think you have to try everything. And in a way you kind of do. Um, but, um, now that I have some more experience under my belt, I'm realizing, you know, I, I tried it. I'm glad I tried it. I don't like it. And I have a few things in my studio stash that I've been kind of reluctant about getting rid of, but at the same time, I'm not using them. I don't really care for them. So I, and there are some things I would like to have and or do, like I want to take life book next year. So, you know, I think some things have to go. Now, now here we have the red violet mixed with the yellow and mixed with the raw sienna. Look at the two different colors that you got. Yeah, pan pastels, had to have them. For me, I know it's probably some kind of artistic sin, but ink tense blocks. I like my ink tense pencils. I'm not a big fan of the blocks, I gotta say. So now we're gonna do it with the green. Yeah, I love my pencils. I just, I'm not a big fan of the blocks and maybe it's just because they're a pain in the neck to use. And again, as I've said, I'm the lazy crafter. So, you know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. There's just something about them. I'm not a big fan. So there's the green, the, the green blue mixed with lemon and mixed with raw sienna. Look at the two different colors that you get. I have to stick my finger over here. I forget what color I'm on. <laughs> so I'm gonna just keep going and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep blending and mixing and I'm gonna keep looking at the screen and while I'm doing this, um, you know, shoot some questions at me. Okay, again, look at those two different colors there. So one of the reasons you want to do this is not only so that you know what colors mix to get what other colors but also so that when you need to mix a certain color for a certain um, painting or piece of work that you are very comfortable with blending your colors together and, and playing and experimenting and it doesn't scare you to have to say, you know, blend a certain color to match, you know, I don't know, the red, the red in the spreader because um, you don't have that exact color red. And I've taken classes where they've asked you to uh, pick, look at that creamy color that happened when I put that white in there. Um, they've asked you to pick two items from around, around you and then color match them <laughs> by blending colors. And so they're one of the most important tools, Erin. I totally agree with you. You learn so much by sitting and playing with your supplies and blending your colors 
about what you can do and about what they can do. Okay, so now we're gonna do naphthol red light. And again, when we do this, we're gonna skip over, you know, the, you know, like here, I blended these with the naphthol red. Um, you could you could actually do this so that you have a row of the original colors down the side and across the top and so you have so you can meet them here and you can you know you would have Hansi yellow here and then everything with raw umber you know going down this you could do that color charts are not ever pointless not ever in a million years I totally disagree with that <laughs> They may, they may be a little tedious. You, you can do it that way. Again, you know, as I've said, I'm the lazy crafter. So yeah, I don't usually do things that way. I've, I've done it where you have to mix it. You know, you should mix it on the paper. I'm just mixing it, I mean on the palette. I'm mixing it right on the paper. I'm doing one square at a time. The paint is wet. Yeah, see, I, don't, I totally disagree with that. Color, paint, color swatches may be a little tedious, but I think it's an important ex exercise and an important practice thing that you have to do to get better at art. So this is the red mixed with um, raw sienna. I can show you how to mix color tones. Um, everybody does it a little differently. There's some, Michelle Theburge on um, YouTube has some really great videos on color mixing skin tones. Okay, let's see, where was I? So we wanna do red violet. So here's our red and our red violet and look at the color that we get. It's pretty dark reddish purple. Look at that. I'm gonna keep moving my finger because I'm trying to answer your questions and do this at the same time and I'm gonna lose where I'm at. <laughs> so here's red and green. Now these are tw normally two colors you don't put together because you're gonna get black or brown, but sometimes you want that neutral color. And look at this dark, interesting, brownish black color that we get and wouldn't that be pretty in a painting as your neutral you know you need when you do a painting with lots of pops of bright color you need a neutral to make it to really offset it and make everything pop and look at that color now when these dry before you forget what you've done you could put little notes right over the dry acrylic paint again with your waterproof marker or any marker really once these are dry just make sure it's dry completely and you it's a 50 50 blend and you could put what two colors um, you know that you put in each square so that you remember okay where was I that was red and green oops see I forgot where I was at it will totally make your painting come to life. You need to have that in your paintings. Then you need is you need neutrals to offset the bright colors. Oh, I'm glad. Um, do you do Periscope, Erin? <clears throat> Look at that dark purpley color, reddish purpley blue pretty. It doesn't show up so well on my drop paper because my drop paper is kind of an off-white color, but. Oh, my first few per periscopes were not great. <laughs> Just FYI. My first few YouTubes were not great, which is funny because some of those first few YouTubes get a lot of views. Cracks me up. Okay, so now we're going to do ultramarine blue. And just like with the Watercolor Wednesday experiments, these these um, 
basics, color blending. This is really important if you want to, you know, get better at art. Don't jump into just doing a painting. You need to do these basics and you need to... You can do all your colors. I chose to just do these sort of primary um, colors for this demo because my chart would end up being too big for the demo and we'd be on camera for too long. Um, but you can definitely do all your colors and I encourage you to do that and to make notes in the squares or to rearrange your chart so that you have a pure tint here and a pure tint across the top so you know which colors you've put in each square. Yes, yes, I agree with you. So now we're gonna do our black and white. Also doing a chart like this where you only use two colors and black and white, and then you mix those two colors in various amounts by themselves and or with black and white to get different colors and see how many different shades of color you can get. with a very limited palette. And believe me, you're gonna get way more shades and tones of color than you think you will. And mixing your own neutrals and your own blacks and knowing how to do that by doing a chart like this um, and using another kind of a homemade neutral rather than black or white is a lot more interesting in your painting than just plain old black. Okay, so this is the red violet, which is a little purpley, and we're gonna mix it with the yellow, but it might turn a little bit brown. See, look at that. Turned into almost a yellow ochre color, didn't it? But that's a real pretty color. So now we're going to mix it with the raw sienna. Again, real pretty color. It's a nice um, reddish, it's kind of a neutral, but it's a kind of a, on the reddish side, but it's pretty. do it with the red. This as usual, this will be on Periscope for 24 hours and after that it will be um, on YouTube. Probably as a Monday for Deco Art, so probably I'll air it next week because it takes a little while to reformat these Periscope videos to be something that is watchable on YouTube. I'm going to mix it with green. You're going to get a neutral. You're going to get something that's, you know, pretty dark. I'm going to add a little bit more of the, because that wasn't quite 50-50. Editing's a pain in the neck, Aaron. <laughs> Just FYI. It is not my favorite thing. I'd rather clean the bathrooms, but it has to be done. Okay, see, where were we? Okay, now I'm on phthalo blue. Um, I did not go to school for art. I went to school for um, early child development, of all things. Um, I have done just about every job on the planet, including um, I was a licensed dispensing optician for a long time. Um, I learned mostly by doing and practicing. I have a few favorite teachers um, in person and online. One of them is Pauline Agnew. And I learned a lot from her and her um, sometimes teaching partner, Melinda Kutsona. They're both um, fine artists and they do a lot with mark making and color blending. Um, let's see. So I think I'm here. So 
so we've only gone about halfway and look at the different colors that we already have on our chart so many different colors and I haven't added any new bottles of paint we're using the same palette of paints <coughs> excuse me I'm I'm doing okay I'm doing okay I've stopped taking <coughs> most of my allergy meds um, after getting sick um, <laughs> which means I'm starting to cough again some more but I think it's one of those uh, things where I think the cure is worse than the disease so <laughs> I don't know I don't know and it's in the middle of you know workman's comp nightmare so who knows what's gonna happen yeah exactly So I've only done half of it and look at the different colors that you have on here. Now you definitely could do this as an art journal background, let it dry and paint something over it um, using your glazing fluid, which would turn the paint translucent and allow some of these colors and marks to show through that upper layer. You definitely could do that. Um, and then in that case, what I would do since this background is so colorful, is I would limit your palette to maybe black and white for what you paint on top so that these pops of color show through what you paint on top. And that would be a really, really, really cute thing to do. I'm gonna do uh, one or two more rows and um, I encourage you guys to Keep going and get your whole chart filled in. If you have any questions, I'm available all over social media um, and, and my Facebook group, uh, Life of Art and Self-Expression. You can go to Facebook and look it up and um, request to join. And uh, if you need any help with anything, yeah, you could do one that's on raw paper and one that's on gesso. You also could take your little squares and put a strip of gesso along one side and let it dry before you do this and that way you know what it looks like on raw paper and gesso which is always a great idea So just keep going and keep playing and seeing, you know, what you can come up with, how many different colors you can come up with. And definitely think about, um, oops. Okay. So I have a strip here. This is just plain. This is another piece of watercolor paper. So I want to show you one more thing before we go this morning. So if you have a palette of, pa of paints, and if you limit the palette to two colors plus black and white. So let's do red and the phthalo blue, which is the darker of the blues, and then black and white. So take a, I'm going to take about 50-50 and mix them together and put them on my paper. You get this really dark purpley blue color. Then I'm going to take a little bit of my white and mix it in. Look what happens to the color. The same colors. I haven't done anything. Yeah? Then I'm going to take it and I'm going to add some black. Look at that charcoal gray that happens. Then you can take it and you can take, there's not much blue left over here, but I can take the little bit that's there and add it to the red. So we have mostly red with a little bit of blue. Look at that. 
completely different color than what we started with. And again, you can add your white. And then add a little bit of black. And you get another gray color, but look at the different gray color. And this is another good color blending exercise. And again, this is another one that is really good to do. Like you could do this on the back of a journal page and wouldn't that be cool? Or, or use this, like this could be a bookmark or cut up for ATC cards or something. Does anybody have any questions? So I want you to go out today, I want you to get some of your paints out and I want you to make some squares. I want you to play with your paints and I want you to blend them. The Deco Art uh, Media uh, Traditions acrylic paints and their Media Fluid acrylic paints are a good quality affordable artist paints to play with if you're just getting started. Um, because uh, I like watercolor paper because it um, warps less as you're working with it. Um, it holds up better to the wet acrylic paint um, than mixed media paper does. Um, it will warp a little bit. You notice this one is warping a little bit, um, but not a lot. Um, mixed media paper warps more and I like things to stay pretty flat. You can do it on any paper. You can do it on cardstock, whatever you have. Oh good, Carol, I'm glad. I've got to practice cutting some more stencils today because somebody asked me if I could do the flower in a three inch and I don't think it's gonna work well, but I'm gonna give it a try and see what happens. <coughs> and I'm out of flowers, so I've gotta cut some more. I've only got mistake cuts <laughs> or oops cuts. Alrighty. So go out and make some color charts with the paints that you have on whatever you have. When I did my reference book, I used mixed media paper. You definitely could do that. You could use cardstock. Use what you have. I have, it's okay, Cheryl. I have a lot of watercolor paper around my studio because I, I like to paint in watercolors primarily. So that's what I have, but use whatever you have. Um, these are something to be used for reference and as a practice exercise. They're not meant to be a finished piece of art. Um, so use what you have. Um, I would just recommend that you start with a white base. So if what you're using is not white, then you probably want to make it white with some gesso. Um, keeping in mind that how your colors look on top of gesso is going to be different than raw paper. Um, I would recommend plain white raw paper. And then if you want to, you could take each square and you could put a little, a little spot of gesso in each square and then do your color swatch over that and that'll tell you the difference between what it looks like on the paper and the gesso. Yep, you can use acrylic paper. If I mean, I always wait. I like, again, I like watercolor paper because that's what I primarily work in. You can use acrylic paper. Remember to use your coupons. Most of your big box arts and craft stores have apps. The apps have coupons in them, um, usually 40% off, so use a coupon. A lot of them will have pa uh, paper sales and, it, you know, buy one pad. Strathmore especially has sales all the time. Buy one pad, get one free. So um, I would recommend that I always wait until when I need paper, I wait until there's a sale or I use a coupon. I never just go just buy paper without one of those to save some money. We're all starving artists here, so you know, you gotta save a couple bucks where you can. I love coupons. I love my coupons on my smart smartphone, especially because I'm never forgetting my coupons. <laughs> Which is a problem. Doesn't help to have coupons if you can't remember to bring them with you to the store. <laughs> but Hobby Lobby has an app, Joann's has an app, Michael's has an app. Yep, that's the way to buy paper, Cheryl. That's I always buy paper when it's buy one, get one free, buy one, get one 50% off. If you have an Aaron Brothers Art and Framing near you, um, they are a subsidiary of Michael's and they frequently have like buy one paintbrush, get two free, buy one canvas, get two free. 
um, buy one pad of paper, get two free, something like that. So if you're near an Aaron Brothers Art and Framing, then I would recommend waiting for them to have a sale. Um, they also have coupons, but they don't have a, an app. You have to go to their website and print the coupon. Um, and it's Aaron, A-A-R-O-N Brothers. So if you Google that, you should find their website. And that's where I also stock up on like paint brushes because they have a really nice selection of fine art quality brushes as well as lesser expensive brushes. Um, and they always have a really good sale. When they have a sale, it's a really good one. <coughs> Anything else? All right, so. Um, yeah, see, AC Moore I know has coupons. Um, there's um, a lot of different, you know, arts and craft stores around the country that aren't near me. Um, so if you have a particular arts and crafts retailer near you, look them up and see if they have an app or at least a printable coupon on their website. A lot of them have both now, these days. So I want you to go out and I want you to make your color charts and I want you to just play with your paints. Now look at right here, all these different colors of neutrals that we got. Yeah, some stores will take a paper coupon from another store, but they won't take the app coupon. So you need to be aware of what the you know rules are for you when you're couponing. If you've done any couponing before, you need to read the rules and five fine print for that store and their coupon policies. Believe me, they have them. I know it's yeah. Anyway, so read their coupon policies before you leave the house, so you know what they are and you're prepared. Um, you may need a paper coupon. Um, but look at all these pretty neutrals we got that you could definitely use in conjunction with like a neon. So if you put, let's see. So here's another Americana paint. This is sizzling pink before we leave. You're welcome. And so look what happens. And this is why Aaron and I were telling you guys, you need some good neutrals. So look at these pretty neutrals and look how this pink pops up against them. And they're so much more interesting than just black or white. So these neutrals are gonna make your, your brights really pop and shine. So learn how to make your own neutrals rather than just always relying on black and white. And uh, play with your products and play with your paint. That's the only way to learn what you like and what you don't like. And um, you know, after you've got a little experience under your belt and you've done a little playing, you realize, like me with my ink tense blocks that I think I'm gonna have to put up for sale because I don't really care for them. Um, the things that you like and the thing that you, things that you don't, you can purge them, pass them on to another artist who's just starting out. You can sell them on Art Supply Hoarders on Facebook, um, anything like that. So go out and have a great day, everybody. Do something nice for yourself. Play with your paints. And I'll see you all later. I'll be here Wednesday, 10 a.m. for um, Watercolor Wednesday. And we are going to do a watercolor fish and play with some background textures and some more basics. You're welcome. I'll see you all later, bye.